just get under 13, 20. That yeah, was yeah. 13, 20. And then if you go under 30, under 27, 40, was amazing. You know, I remember yeah. when the standard was under 28 minutes at the Olympics. So I just you, made it like just I, I limped my way onto the team only yeah. eight years ago. You know, like and now you can't get it. I mean, oh, nice. you Imagine can't you even 27, 30. You won't even make the team. No, you won't so even think yeah. about making a team. Yeah, there used to be just people worrying about getting the standard. Yeah, exactly. that was the that thing. Was that was the that. talk. The standard. Yeah. Everybody's going after the standard. Yeah. If you don't have the standard. By now, you might as well not even show up to the U.S. championships. Yeah. Turn it on. It sounds like you retired from the 10K after beating Abby in the cross country race. Right? You never <laughs> run that far since, have you? Yeah, because you know, I was just doing it because it wasn't my, it wasn't my, uh, what's it called, my liking to do it. But you know, basically, you're forced to do it because uh, right. college cross country. So <laughs> otherwise, you know, you know, your, 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 your team depends on you. And the coach is looking up to you. Hey, you got to run this. Stretch it. So he basically, when I was running the 10K, it, that was a huge stretch. I would not even train for it. And I didn't even know how to train for it. So I was just basically training with the guys in the team. But then my specialty was the short stuff, the mile. And so, um, but back then, you know, that was what I was what I was known for doing. That's the 1500. But then in the cross country, it was a stretch. Running with the guys that are natural, like Abdi and Mab and Adam Coucher, all those guys were, that was their distance. And for me, and that's why I was like, when this thing is over, the cross country is over, I'm not, you're not going to see me again doing anything like that because there's no point of me doing it. And now I'm here doing something yeah, so like three times. <laughs> yeah. So why yeah, you just leapfrog right over the 10K and go to the half marathon? What's that? What's I think that? it's fun. You know, I've been training for, you know, since November, and I wanted to do something that is a, a bit of a challenge. Abdi, of course, has been telling me ever since we train in Flagstaff, hey, you know what? Man, you're looking so strong in the workouts. You know, I think he, if you were to try a half marathon, in fact, this is a guy, if it was... He's, I mean, if it was according, if it was according to Abdi, I could have done this thing like maybe five years ago. And because he's been telling me, hey, you have to do this. You know, you're training so hard. You, you know, you're matching my strengths. Mm -hmm. in, and, you know, I look at what I've done. And so and I, I was tempted. But then after this, after the Olympics, I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do my best and <clears throat> try to go out there and try my best with these guys. So it's something different. You know, uh, we hear the phrase rhythm runner used a lot to talk about people who just get into the same pace on, on flat surfaces mainly, and that's mainly the kind of racing that you've done, obviously. I mean, something like the, the Hills of Central Park here, I mean, do you have any idea based on your workouts or whatever how you can be able to handle it? Um, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to handle it, uh, but I think the thing is you don't think about that, you know, I'm going to hit another hill somewhere there. Yeah. Just go with the flow, mm -hmm. and, um, and I guess just run in the pack, yeah. you know, you don't even see any of some things, you don't even hear how, you know, things are, how things are going. So basically I'm going to be, I'll try just to avoid it yeah. as much as possible. So and about. Yeah, I'm not going to think about it. But once I maybe finish that six mile, when I just think maybe that six mile is over, <laughs> then I will just like, whew, now we can just run on the flat. Do you think he's in for rude awakening on those hills? Yes. I, I don't know. My, my my first half marathon was one of my, you know, like easiest. You know, like yeah. sometimes, like you like you, you say, you don't know what you're getting into, yeah. so it's yeah. not as bad. You know, like yeah. in you know you can get through the last few miles. You know, and at that point, you know you're you've already ten miles in or something like yeah. that. It's you know it's it's psychological. Whereas if you uh, if you after that first one, you're like, oh God, I know what's coming. It's gonna be, it's gonna be terrible. That's yeah. a, that's a different story. So, yeah. you know, it's just you say it's like any other race. You know, you're gonna have rough spots, and you know if you can manage those, and you know for Bernard, if he can manage those and still make it to to the end, I think it's gonna it's all instinct. You yeah. know, then you know you you hang on and you kick like any other race, and so um, you know hopefully that's not, not the case for me. <laughs> <laughs> few more questions for the group, and then we'll split these guys up so you guys can really get those in-depth questions. Uh, Bernard and Abdi, you, you guys mm -hmm. roomed at the Olympics this year, correct? Or yes. Yes? Mm. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He was snoring. I mean, <laughs> no, I was just kidding. No. Um, I, we were rooming at the Olympics together, but, but I think most of the time, I would say maybe... 10% of the time I stayed in the village and uh, most of the time I was with my family at the outside of London because I wanted to 
you know, we rented a flat, and so we were making our own food, and I wanted to get, you know, away from the village life. It, it, it was like almost too much, you know. I, 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 I stayed in the village in, you know, the last three Olympics, and I wanted to get something different, just that different environment where I can see the kids and, you know, playing, and then my head is off the, the running and all these things. And that, to me, I thought that was the perfect setting. So, But, yes, it was my, my roommate, Lee Manzano, uh, Trevor Barron, the, the race worker. Race worker. Race the race worker, he's a good kid. Uh, who else was there? Map. And Map. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, but I didn't see Map even one day because he was downstairs, I think. Yes. But this guy is always good. He doesn't Speak. make noise, though. That's Speaking good. Speaking of kids, <laughs> You can, your kids are going to be here for the race. Yes, they are going to be here. They're, they're going to be cheering for you like mad, but w what are they going to do about Uncle Abby? Oh, they're going to be cheering for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> My son might actually go for Abby. <laughs> uh, Daddy, he's okay. Abby, go! <laughs> All right, guys, why don't I give us a minute, and uh, Abby, you can stay where you